and that there it had always been, at least from 1881, there had been a pullout. So you can see that that's been, so it's you know it's not a circle, but there was there was movement and there was a there, there was a, a, a turnaround there uh, that that is, is formed by you know with in front of the stage. It really served the the uh, train station. Let's have the next one. Um, the main purpose of it, and you can see, there really wasn't very much residential development here in, in 1881. Um, but, but the main purpose of it is that it served the Belmont Driving Range, Driving Park. So this, this is a, a race course that existed um, off, of, off of Meeting House, and it's where Marion Park is today. So this was that Marion Park was the development begun in the 1920s, mid-1920s. And, um, and it was done 150 years after the American Revolution, so that's why all the street names are tied into Re Revolutionary War figures. Um, but so this was, and this was very extremely popular during the 1876 fair, so people would come out to Elm Station, they would get off, then they would, they would be carried over to the, to the race course. So what I imagine is that a lot of the purpose of that piece of land was as a, as a, as a pickup place. To, to pick up people and bring them and then bring, bring them back again. Okay, let's have the next one. So a little bit later, so here we're, we're up to 1908, and this is from the 1908 atlas, the, the uh, Mueller atlas, that was actually produced by Narber's first Burgess, the first mayor of Narber. Uh, his business was creating these, these, these atlases. So um, he would have known this particular one quite, quite, quite well. So here you see Narber Station. The, the, the train station is in, is in blue. And then we also have a post office. That's a framed post office that you're seeing now. So, so that was pretty early on. So in the, by the first decade, uh, probably by the 1890s, there was the post office there. So you can see this area of the train station was taking on a civic role. Okay, So it, it, was, it was the sort of turnaround. It was a place to pull off. But it, but it also was beginning to function in a civic way. Also, we're beginning to, to have commercial development at this time too. So you see that that building on the right hand side there uh, is this like Dutch gamble uh, structure which had residential uh, housing above and it had commercial space on, on the bottom. So during this particular time we're beginning to get uh, commercial development but before that it was really pretty much residential. Let's have the next one. Um, so but like, sorry, so we have here, let me just gonna step away for just, just a minute. This is a house, this is a house, this is a house, this is a house. But so that's the, early, the earliest development. But within about 20 years' time, all those houses are going to be giving way to, to commercial structures. Um, and you begin to see that happening with some of the open land. So, in other words, so we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But, but I want to talk a little bit about sort of how, that's, how this, that space next to the train station worked. Um, you can see that there's a, there's a side track coming off of it, and you can see it's a sig signal tower, and then there's that track that kind of shoots off toward, toward Narberth Avenue, and that's what you're seeing right here. This was where coal cars would unload coal. This was the, uh, uh, there, was, you know, a, there was a coal pit, so they would, dump, they would dump the coal, wagons would then pick it up and, and then carry it out and for, for, for delivery. So that's what that space, and what you're seeing there is the, the approach over the the uh, track. So that on the left, where that fence is, that's Narberth Avenue as it's heading for South South Narberth. Um, okay, let's. Um, so you can see where it says cold Okay, let's have the next one. This is what that space is like today. So that side track is gone, but the space is still there. So that that drop down is the same drop that used to have in, in the past. Um, and you can see the. And this was a the, where, where the little gym is now. That had been a garage. So in the 1920s, that was a, a, a garage. Um, building that had been constructed there. Okay, let's have the next. So I was starting to talk about um, this being residential. This is the, the, the Owens house, which is right across from where Station Circle is, is today, had a small stable and then, and then, and then a house. Um, so initially, this was developing residentially, similar to, say, Marion Station, um, which is really in the middle of, of, of a neighborhood. Um, but it seemed as if pretty early on there was a decision or a sense that, that, we, that Norbert needed to have a commercial space. Uh, and it is, I and mean, I think it's probably one of the really remarkable aspects of Norbert. I mean, we're the only town I know of on the main line that has a commercial 
space, uh, the main commercial area that's neither, neither Montgomery Avenue nor like Lancaster Avenue. And I, I do think that that's the source of a lot of why people feel Narberth is, is a special place. Okay, let's have the next. Uh, the first substantial commercial building on Nar in Narberth was the, Ar the arcade building that, that you see right here. It was a fairly large, fairly large structure, uh, again, right across from, from the Narberth train station. And most of it, or part of it still exists. They had a, a, a terrific fire in 1940 that took out sort of three-fifths of that building. Um, but, but the right-hand section of it still, still remains. Um, this photograph, this postcard is from about 1910, probably. Okay, let's have the next. Um, this is kind of an interesting artifact. The, uh, there was a pageant. You know, they would do these historical pageants and very, very popular in the early 20th century. There was a Narberth Day fete and historical pageant in 1914. This is the same time that uh, Narberth Park is getting, getting going. There's a lot of sort of civic interest in, in the borough. Uh, what's interesting about this program that had the whole uh, the whole program for the event, there's a lot of advertising. And let's, let's have the next one. And the advertising, a lot of it is tied to this particular structure. And it, yeah. Okay, so we have, I picked it out in red, Imperial, Narber's leading, leading grocery, who was in that, that storefront right, right there, uh, as part of the arcade. So groceries, fruits, and vegetables. Let's have the next one. Uh, Meeson's Bakery, I suspect it's probably a German German bakery, uh, homemade roll, bread and roll. What's interesting about this is this is where the French bakery is now. Yeah. In the same exact storefront. So it's kind of, you know, what goes around comes around. Okay, let's have the next one. And then in this, this section left, this, this was for Bricklands. Uh, Bricklands had only opened the year before. 19, 1913, Bricklands opened. Hyman, Hyman Brickland opened it, and uh, so he was in that space. So when the fire of 1940 came, it took out that part. It took out everywhere from that large peaked area. It took out everything from that point left. Uh, and so Ricklands, they, they rebuilt that one-story building. So they basically stayed in the same location, just in a, in a different building. Okay, let's have, uh, actually, you know what? Let, me, let me go back just one. Something I noticed that I hadn't really been paying attention to before this is that you can already see this hump. See this hump area? That's the, that's the raised area. That's the, you know, this, what's now a, a fully formed circle. But there, there was this space that had trees and had plantings of some, some kind. But I, I don't have any other photos from this period that have it. But you can see that there, there was a tree and that there was some, some smaller scale stuff there. But it had some height to it. Okay, let's have the next. Um, the other thing that was getting, it, it was along the lines of the division of the commercial development, there was the civic development going on as well. This is from uh, the, the YMCA building, which was on Forest, corner of Forest and Haverford, was built in 1908. And if you think about Narbus buildings, this was the grandest building that Narbus had, really. Uh, you know, very much a colonial revival building in the, in the style of, of that particular early, early 20th century. The building right next to it, which doesn't exist anymore, had been the fire department and Borough Hall. So there was the, where we are right now, that was in the second floor of that, that, that particular building. Um, so, okay, let's have the next. You can see what's the YMCA. Now, the interesting thing about the YMCA building was that it was built not only as a YMCA, but it was built with commercial storefronts along Haverford Avenue. And I've never seen a building quite like, like this that is very much this formal, you know, revival um, building that was also trying to accommodate the, the mercantile side of things. Um, the YMCA did not do very well, and it, it was opened in 19, say, 1908, 1909. By the 1920s, it, it was done. And so, um, so the, the YMCA is gone, and by the late 1920s, they basically put a big addition right on the, on the, on the front of it, because there, there was a green space be, between. So that, this, this photograph is probably about 1930. Uh, so you have that, this, this appendage tacked onto it for additional commercial space. Let's have the next. And this is more the way the building appears today. If you get back from it a little ways, you can still see those, 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 <coughs> the top of the original building with then now it has a second or after, probably around 1960, it acquired that, that second story. So it further obliterates the building behind it, but it's, it's back there. So anyway, let's have the next one. 
So, all right, so now looking at some of the other buildings, because really, in a sense, uh, Station Circle is it's created by the buildings that, that frame it in, in a large extent. Those are the fixed elements. So looking at those, you can see on the right there's that building I talked about before the, in, in, in pink. Um, now, as you can see, there's a line that goes right through it. It says Edward Cole on one side and Mrs. Moore on the other. Well, these were, these, this was one building owned by two people, and there was a firewall down, down the middle. So the, 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 the side of the closest to, to Station Circle, they wanted to replace it. So in, in the mid to late 1920s, the, the building that's, that's there now was, was they, they, they carved off that part and, and then put this building. It had been a drugstore before, and it continued to be a drugstore afterwards. Let's have the next. All right, now, so in, in looking at it, in uh, community use, I was trying to think about how, where, where's the interest? Ha, has there been interest in this space and use of this space at, at, at other times, other than just as a place to, to sort of turn around and, 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 and pick, pick people up? And I think, okay, this, is a, the, um, this was donated to our, to our collection. I, I'm with the Friends of Norfolk History, which is a, a, you know, sort of a loosely organized organization that has been looking at trying to preserve artifacts of the borough's history. Um, these were two, two photographs, nicely produced photographs on really heavy paper that, that we were, we were uh, donated about, about two years ago. And it shows a particular event. And we, at the time, we didn't know that it was what date it was, but now we do. It was October 4th, 1942. And it was occasioned by the borough hanging out a, 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 a banner. And this was the banner to indicate that they had, people had children who were serving in the armed forces, okay? And there were small ones who would hang them in, in their windows uh, with, with a blue star, and if, uh, if your child was killed in the war, you, you would have a gold star. And that's where the notion of gold star mothers comes, comes from. So they, they hung this, this banner on October 4th, 1942, and let's have the next one. But in addition, along with the photograph, is this envelope, and it was envelope with, with like sparkly things, and there was this note, was in it as, as well, explaining what these photographs were. These were mailed to, to soldiers overseas to let them know that, that you know, we're thinking about you back, back home. Um, you know, when they talk about it, it says more than 2,500 persons were present, and the occasion was described as the most impressive ever held in our, in our hometown. Um, perhaps in one of the pictures, you may discover somebody from your house sitting on the chairs reserved for the relatives of the servicemen. To Joe McGuire having delegated the use of his filling station for that special purpose. All right, so the filling station was the backdrop for all this, but it stretched into the space that we're all looking at today. It really, you know, that between the, the filling station and, and this, this is part of that central core that in the war was being used as a gathering place, uh, for, uh, as a public gathering space. And it's been used that way for a lot uh, over time. And I, can, I think, I didn't have photographs of it, but Santa arriving on the train. Uh, the, there's a, there's a, the, the, the menorah gets lit there every year. So there's a number of things. I remember with events where Dan, Dance Express has little, little kids that dance. And stuff. So that particular space has, has been used in a community way, in an ad hoc way, uh, a lot over the years. Let's have the next one. Um, now the next big thing that happens uh, is, and this is where sort of small town history ties in with national history, okay? in the late 50s and early 1960s, and some people in this room will remember these, these things, um, there were anti-littering anti campaigns. In the late 50s, we begin to see these anti-littering campaigns happening, especially on the 1960, you know, don't forget every little bit hurts, you know, keep America beautiful. And this, this girl was named um, um, Susan, I, I'm, I'm blanking on it now, but it, we'll, we'll see that, um, Susan Spotless. Okay, so, so um, and, and this was, like, and usually it's a child explaining to their idiot parents that you shouldn't litter. I mean, it's, it's that kind of thing, like, Dad, it's, you know, it goes in the can, you know? So anyway, so there was a lot of, this particular ad was from 1964. The other thing that happens is um, Lady Bird Johnson and the Highway Beautification Act of 1965, and this was really an effort to uh, limit billboards on highways, to plant wildflowers along, along highways and all that. And, that it, and this kind of stuff extended down to, to the local level as well. There are all these publicity photos of, of, of lady bird planting things. So really a mixture of anti-litter and then pro uh, sort of ennobling the landscape with, with, with flowers. Let's have the next one. 
And we, we see that really mu very much in Narberth because NICE gets going mm -hmm. at, at that particular. The Narberth Improvement Cleanup Endeavor mm -hmm. uh, is, the, is developed in the spring of, of 1967. And we know, we know quite a bit about this because we actually have a copy of, there's a scrapbook they put together that, that described the first five years of it. So there, these are the kinds, and I actually brought a, a, a photocopy of it, so if you want to take a look at it at some point. So they would get out these, these trash bags to keep in your car, to put trash you wouldn't be throwing out the window. And they had a poster contest. The first thing they did was have a poster contest. You can see it's kind of a, a direct lift from, from the Susie Spotless thing. It says, you know, keep Narberth clean, and so you have people throwing uh, garbage. I just noticed that there's a, there's a marked cigarette pack. So that's, that's a cultural artifact <laughs> in and of itself. And I think, yeah, in fact, they even call, they say the borough's Susan Spotless, okay, um, here. So that was in, in the spring of 1967. Let's go ahead and have, have the next. Um, and at that moment, there was an effort to redesign and re replant that little piece, that little sort of semicircular piece in, in, in Station Circle. And that was a creation of this guy named Joe Morris, who was part of the Narva Shade Tree Commission. He was also chief of, of maintenance for the Lower Marion School, school District. Um, and so he drew up this, this particular plan that called for paving stones, uh, a, a park bench. This was also a bus stop. So it was to, to sort of make it a more uh, welcoming bus stop. And then a whole, whole planting plan, which would have a large tree and then other ones. And he's, just, he's describing what kinds of plant materials that, he, that he'd like to see, see there. And you can see him after they were cutting down the tree. Let's have the next one. And here's the work underway. So this is the before. There were several, apparently there were six, six trees which they claimed were not doing too well. So those, those trees were all take, taken out. The, the parameters of the space, did, of, of the site didn't change, but they, they removed everything. Let's have the next one. And then, so here's a snapshot of before and after. So you can see it's the, still, still the same structure, but there's a, there's a new tree, there's, there's, there's shrubs. And there's the, there's the field stone and then, and then the bench. So this would have been, you know, both in the, in the spring of spring of 1967. But you can see the ancillary stuff too. You can see taxi cabs. So you know, there, a, this is a taxi taxi stand as well. Um, and you can see the old the old train station still remains at this point. They would be gone in about three years. Okay, let's have the next. Um, he also did a plan for the section next to the railroad tracks. Okay, so that part where you're coming down from the train on the station circle side, uh, he also he also con constructed a, a, a you know more much more ambitious plan for that. He calls it beautif beautification proposal, vest pocket plantings in the Arbor Station, um, and you can see the, all, all the different different materials. Carolina rhododendron. Uh, they're specking a, a, a white a white dogwood. So kind of un understory trees there. Um, so there's there's all all of that. And to some extent, they, they, they implemented this. Let's have the next one. You can see some of that work underway. Not only did they work on that particular section next to the track, but also that long strip that runs behind the buildings on, on, the, uh, on, on the south side of, of, of Northworth Avenue. They're beginning to, to, to plant those areas as well. Uh, but it was very open. It was very sparse uh, before that. Now it's actually pretty, pretty dense. Let's have the next. The other thing that happens is they look, they hook up with other organizations that are doing beautification projects. The Men's Garden Club of Delaware Valley uh, launched a, 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 a tulip bulb planting effort uh, in, in the fall of, of 1967, and it was a joint venture between uh, the Rosemont Villanova Civic Association. They planted at the train station in Rosemont, the Gladwin Civic Association, and then NICE. And NICE was represented by Emily Parkin and Catherine Westman. They, they both lived over on, on Grove Place, and they are, this is, this is Emily, this, this, is, this is Catherine. But they were the, they were the force behind, behind NICE. Bennett? Yep. Emily is turning 100 years old. Is she? Is she yeah. really? Because she's the one who made the scrapbook available right. to us. The original the scrapbook is at the Narberth Live Library now. We have, we have a, a photocopy, but. That's great. I didn't realize that. Sometimes these are like super literally, but I think it's hard. That's great. Oh, that's that's fabulous. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. That's that, that's that's great. That's great news. So he was, yeah. And this was all that sort of World War II generation. I mean, these people were all sort of having kids during the 19, 1950s. Okay, let's have the next. 
So here's the bulb plant. The bulbs were actually supplied, there were 2,000 bulbs supplied by Dutch bulb growers. So these came from, from Holland um, to, to support this particular project. So you can see they're planting the bulbs in that same insulation circle and in the other area uh, in the fall of 1967. So by, by May of 68, you had them come, coming up. Okay, let's have the next. Um, lots of stuff was going on around that 1970. 71, you've got the, uh, the shed is beginning to, to come down. Because there were, there were wooden sheds on both sides. The, the Overbrook train station shed is very much like the one we used to have in, in, in Narver. Uh, but it had, it had gotten run down, and people were really not very, very really romantic about it. They kind of wanted it gone. And NICE really formed, at least in part, to sort of combat the sort of eyesoreness that people were feeling about this particular area. Uh, the, the construction fence, this was just before the train station came down, Bob, Bob Weisberg was talking about seeing the construction fence when he was a kid. So that's the moment uh, when, when that's about to, to come down. So by 1971, the, the, new, the new building that houses the, the liquor store is, is there. The train station actually came down before this train shed did. Okay, let's have the next. Um, now, it, there's a little bit of an inkling that People were using this space, too, in some ways, in a, in a commemorative way. Uh, you can see this little three-level planting bed over here. Well, you can see two of them have little, little plaques, the top one and the middle one. There used to be a plaque on that bottom one as well, but it isn't, it isn't there anymore. Um, but these were put up in 1972. Let's, let's have them in the next one. And this was to, to remember three things. One is. It was 50 years since Holy Trinity Lutheran Church opened. So they were celebrating their 50th anniversary in 1972. Um, Narberth had just lost Adam uh, Smitty Smith, who was a, a much beloved guy who worked at, at Freeman's Market, which is on Haverford Avenue, and, and, and then Rickland's. He worked in Narberth for a period of 45 years from the mid-1920s. So he dies in 1971. They created a plaque for him. And then the last plaque was for Philip Capalongo, who was the principal of, of the Narva School. He had just died as well. So here's the, the, the photograph from the Mainline, Mainline Times from December of 72. So you have Adam's uh, uh, wife on the right, and then Phil, Phil Capalongo's wife, and then the, the uh, minister, Orion Eichner, from Holy, uh, the Holy Lutheran Church. So I don't know where, whatever happened to, to Phil Capalongo's plaque, but. Uh, but anyway, but it was a, there was an int intent and interest in, in having a memorial function uh, begin to happen here as well. Let's have the next. All right, so the next thing that sort of sets us up really for the work that you all are going to be doing is the, the 2003 downtown plan. And the station circle iteration that we see there now was, was part of that 2003 plan. It was actually a much larger plan for mostly paving and parking uh, throughout the, the, the Narberth downtown. So it was, it was new, new, new sidewalks, lighting, the, the, the uh, clock on, on the corner of Forest and Haverford gets built at this time also. Um, but you can see what the initial sketch plan was to create trees uh, and then to create this expanded and rounded off uh, central, uh, central feature uh, with, with an, an, an array of, of, of formalized parking com coming off of it. Um, let's have the next one. And this, this is how it looks, looks today. And just kind of spending some time there the other day, I was thinking about how, um, how, that, how that plan took shape and then how it's changed in the years since, since 2003. Um, and, and it strikes me there's, it's, there's a lot of stuff there. You just kind of feel like there's a lot of, of object matter there. Let's, let's have the next. Um, these, these were uh, aluminum, these aluminum light standards were, were put in, uh, and they began failing almost immediately. They, they really weren't, they weren't structurally secure enough to be able to withstand being bumped, and they got bumped a lot, a lot right? So to, to protect the, the light ballers, they put up these other metal, metal ballers, and so they were the things getting bumped. And so I, for a while there, I was, I was going, I would harvest all of these pieces of broken taillights, <laughs> especially the Narberth, uh, Narberth liquor store, I think was the toughest place to come out of, and that's where I harvested most of it. Um, so you see that, so you can see a number of those. Uh, let's have the next one. I don't know why I did this. This, this happened the other day, I, I kept 
to change the map. All right, well, if you look sideways, there's also a lot of <laughs> stuff that's bolted, yeah. bolted down. And so it's, I mean, if, if you're looking for a space that can be, be flexible, this isn't it, you know. Um, so they initially bolted down these chairs and, and tables, and then these benches that are kind of askew to it. And so it has, it has kind of a plop down feel to it, anyway, to my, to my eye it does. And then it's acquired new things with the, the bolted down um, bicycle for repair, and, and, and the pump, and then the, the, the water fountain. So it, it's over these last, say, 15 years, it's a space that's gotten filled up a lot. Um, so I think it's, I mean, I'm glad that the work that you're all be doing because, and that the borough's embarked upon, because it's, a, it's time to rethink rethink that, that entire space, and so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that this is happening. Let's have the next one. Um, I wanted to close out with um, a few aerial views, just to kind of look at everything together, and in a way, this is, I think, I want to, I want to advocate that in your, in your thought process, don't think too exclusively about only Station Circle. It, I think it's important that we really think about that area that extends in the back where, 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 where the parking is. This is a view from 1929. So you can see um, it was still very much related, that whole area was related to, to, to the train activity. You can see freight cars. When's the last time you saw a freight car coming through here? But so there's, there's a freight train. You can see where that side track is shooting off. Um, and, you can, and so in behind the buildings, behind the buildings on the south side of Haverford Avenue, there's no parking there at that point. It's all shed. It's all industrial. It's all sort of railroad and uh, re you know related to the activities of that of that side track and things that are being delivered in, in that in that particular way. Buildings are all the same, pretty, pretty much. You know, this that south that south side of Haverford Avenue has not really changed appreciably since 1910, which is a remarkable thing when you consider how much how much space has changed. So let's have the next one. This is from 1953. So you can see in 1953, those little chutes where the, where the coal is, they, they, they still exist. So this is a space that has changed a little bit, but it's still not the space that, 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 that we know. Uh, and there's, there's, you can see there, there's uh, storage tanks on, on that high part of ground. That, that side track still remains. The side track is still there in the 19, 1950s. Um, you can, you can see the uh, train shed, the Norbert Station is still there. That, that little small area, the little small area that had all the trees is there as well. And let's have the next one. Next one is 1970. This was the, the least clear of them, but it's, it's by 1970 that really you begin to have parking behind that, that space. Uh, the storage tanks are still there at, at this point, and there's still a shed area. There's still a shed up, up on, on that high level as well, but things are beginning to be sort of cleared out of there. The function of that is, has really changed by 1970. You can see the old train station's gone, and we have the new, we have the new building there, but we still have the old shed. So this is the, the, Narber, the uh, Narber shed, the train sheds on both sides haven't gone yet. Okay, let's have the next one. But then here's what the, kind of the overall plan. At this point, those storage tanks go away, and that's when that higher level develop, parking was developed for the, uh, the little, little gym. So you have the, the entrance coming off on, on that high side as, as well, the entrance into the parking lot. So I would encourage in all of your thinking to, you know, don't just look at Station Circle. Look at this hole because everything is really interrelated in, in that area. And so you really can't balkanize Station Circle because it's all, it all needs to be thought about. And I'm, I'm hoping that that's that, that the sort of the mandate of, of, of the landscape architecture firm that we engage is, is gonna is gonna be able and willing and interested in, in looking taking that that, that that broader view because it's a the, the design issue is, is bigger I think than, than just station so let's have the next one and there we go. Okay so um, so I, I figured let me find a charrette picture. So I got a charrette picture for you guys so we can send you on your way with with, with, with your markers. And uh, so anyway, so I also would ask you to um, check out the Friends of Narbert History web website. I should put it on there, but it's it's narberthistory.org, and there's lots of lots of material. You can have lots of fun there. 
there's, there's a lot of material to be looking at. Um, George Lonsdorf is our, is our webmaster, and he has put an incredible amount of information together. We have census data. You can find out everybody who lived in your house from 1900 to 1940, and soon we'll have the 1950 census. But uh, it's, it's a really rich amount of information, so you can do a lot of your own just discovering of Harvard history yourself. So, And that's it. Thank you much. Thanks, Dennis. As always, entertaining and informative, and a tough act to follow, I have to say. I'm Jim Cornwell of Harvard Planning Commission. You probably saw me too much of me last time, two weeks ago. I just wanted to introduce the fact that we are we take the comments that this group made last time very seriously. I hope you got a copy as you came in the door of a of a compilation of all the comments that we got. We got 57 comments by my count. I may have over undercounted a little bit because a lot of them are duplicates. And there weren't 57 people here. So some people made more than one intelligent comment. And we are uh, taking that comment along with all the other ones very seriously. So you're going to see on a continuous loop the cards that you actually wrote two weeks ago and the, the uh, handout that you got as you came in the door um, should, more or less, if I, if I did it right, should reflect the same things that are on the wall. The main event tonight is, is the actual charrette, which is your, this, this group is largely composed of the people who were here two weeks ago, although there's some new faces. Um, and again, our goal is to tease out of you folks, most of whom are laymen in, the, in this business of space planning, mm -hmm. the, the hopes and desires that you all have for the space. <clears throat> it's right now a parking lot and not much more, uh, but we have the idea that it could be a lot more. And the comments that uh, we received from you Last time, underscore that. You'll notice if you look at that piece of paper, you can't tell it from the wall here so much, but from the, on the uh, compilation, you'll notice that some of the comments are duplicates of one another, and there are some uh, <coughs> there are some very popular comments that are uh, made up to eight different times. Eight different people would make a comment, and, and if you look at your uh, at your handout, you'll you'll see that that means something. That means that there's a trend in the reaction to the discussion the last time. And <clears throat> we on the Planning Commission who are, who are analyzing all this stuff are taking that quite seriously. So the goal tonight is uh, to, to take your recollections of what you saw before and the things you thought about in the intervening two weeks and uh, scribble on a piece of paper the things that you think are the most important things. We're not expecting anybody in the room to be an artist or a designer, a landscape architect, a bridge builder, and any other any other stripe. We're expecting you to to convey to us your hopes and dreams on a piece of paper or on multiple pieces of paper. Uh, you'll see on the wall over there the drawing that we had on the, on the wall last time, which shows the current, as a cartoon, it shows the current configuration of Station Circle. On, on your table now is the same plan, but with the curb lines eradicated. So it's a blank slate for us collectively to scribble on tonight. So the, please. The sense of what's going to be happening behind where the old base was and American Fashion Market, that parking lot back there. Did they put plans in that were that were approved? No. Uh, do we know? I mean, I just wonder what's going to happen to the parking back there. Well, keep that. Hold on to that thought. That is that is in a uh, in a holding pattern, and there's new owner, as you know, but the, but that owner's plans are not are not developed yet. We are. Um, we have no no idea, and I can't I can't give a a, a reason a, an explanation that's worth two cents. 
tonight. I'm sorry, I wish I could explain it, but I can't. We're all curious to know what's going to happen there. Will it be, will it be a, uh, will the parking lot be a feeder into the, into whatever, whatever we design? I don't really know. I suspect yes, if I had guess, it would be 60% yes, 40%, who knows. So, you can factor that into your, into your uh, conversation and your work tonight. Um, it's an open, it's an open question. All right. With, with no, uh, well, Jim, do you know if any of the, the new buildings under construction or the new apartment that was just completed on uh, Windsor Avenue, I know that one has underground parking. Are any of those buildings going to have parking that's yes. accessible to the public? They, no. Or is it just for residents? No, it's for residents. It's for residents. Okay. They all have parking within their, within their footprint for a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Now, one-to-one -one is... There will be people who have more than one car, for sure. But statistically, one-to-one -one covers it. There's some people who won't have any car. And that's increasingly the case. Yeah. Increasingly the case in America. Particularly in urban America, which is where we live. So, the, the, the idea is that one-to-one -one parking is pretty much going to handle it. Okay? But it's not for the public. Yeah. Okay? Well, the reason I ask is, it would be nice if we could get rid of the parking in the circle and make it a real green space, but parking is such a premium that I can't imagine. Well, you are going to have to flip a coin tonight, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what has to either go on your plan or not, and, and, and we'll, be, we'll be wrestling with that very subject. Now, I'm going to introduce Dave Brower, who also is an architect, and not that we should hold that against him. And he is going to lead and explain the, uh, the charrette process, which probably most of you have never experienced. Uh, but Dave is an expert in it, and we're going to have several people who are going to wander around the room here as facilitators to help everybody uh, come to terms with their colored pens and this flimsy paper that we've provided. So, Dave, take it away. Step one is to get some light in it. Um, okay, the, there, there are a few, few ideas to, to uh, get out uh, as you start this. First of all, we weren't sure how many people were going to show up, so we set out a number of tables. I think some consolidation would be a good idea. So there's like somewhere between five and eight people a table. So if, if some of you don't mind, moving uh, that are kind of underpopulated tables. And so we have roughly that, that number <laughs> in each table. And um, as Jim said, we, we will be you know, at, at all the tables uh, doing the facilitating and try, trying to keep the conversation flowing. The first thing to remember about what we're doing for the next 45 minutes or so, is that we, the idea is not to come up with a finished design. We're here to, to get ideas down on paper, and this is one time in your life where neatness does not count. You know, we have a lot of big colorful fat markers to mark on the paper. The, the tracing paper that's in front of you in the profession is known as trash, because we go through so much of it. So don't be shy about marking it up and then ripping off new sheets from, from the rolls and, and putting down a new sheet. Um, the, the point is to get a discussion going about what we all want to see uh, here. Uh, we're not looking to get a consensus that everybody agrees, uh, but we, we want to get the ideas that we started to talk about in the first meeting and get them on paper and to start developing them. And we, as, as Dennis talked about, we want to think about the entire area that extends from the Citizens Bank on the corner of Essex all the way over to, you know, uh, about where the bookstore is uh, on, the, uh, on the east side of Forest Avenue. And to think about the entire space from, from uh, the bank to the bookstore, from the station,
to the face of the buildings on the other side of Haverford Avenue, mm -hmm. and to think of it holistically. And um, at the end, at the end of the exercise tonight, if we have enough time, uh, I'd like to be able to pin pin each table's work product up, and somebody from each table, you all have to fight among yourselves to get up and give a very short presentation on, on what you did uh, in the time given to you. And the category, the title of that, I would say, is what's the big idea? When I, when I used to teach a design studio at Drexel, I, I, at the presentations, I'd always ask the students, well, what was the big idea? There should be some controlling thought that permeates through the design. Uh, and it doesn't have to be earth shattering, you know, like trying to end world hunger. It could be as simple as, you know, gee, we want a place for the kids to be able to play or to have some grass. Or, but there should be something that, that kind of directs you in thinking about that. So with that, I said, what do we have about a half hour? I think we should consolidate a little bit more when we have consolidated. Feel free to go to a different table if you are a sparsely populated table. It will be much more effective if you have about five people in every table. It's a lot. It's a lot more fun when people. Are, it's a lot more fun when people at tables disagree with each other. Okay, good. All right, so with that, I don't want to waste any more time. We have, I guess, about about 45 minutes or so. Facilitators will fan out, and let's get started. Just the sidewalk, I'm thinking okay. like just something for shade for you know pedestrians, but then we'll use it across the street as like defining pathways. This was intended as a bow bell, kind of a drop off. Yeah, yeah the yeah. drop out is you you only so the drop out. That's good. We have our trees, Jim. That Thank gives you, you quite, awesome. a, quite a bit more green <laughs> space, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Don't be afraid to scribble well, notes on the drawing. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm then presupposing that we're doing something with parking. We, well, well parking I think I like, I like the idea of <laughs> mixing parking in with trees, Okay. but having it be loose and not... Dedicated. Maybe we should draw it on something first. No, 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 we, a, had, we, have, more, we have more paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. If you don't like what you draw, the way Sort of highlight this whole circle by having embedded um, lighting at night, you know? Oh, natural lighting. Like, like embedded in the ground. Yeah, it be so. Yes, so uh, it wouldn't have to be so blinding like this. Right. Like yeah, almost so eye level. Yeah. Yeah. They have that little free library and like quiet oasis meeting yeah. area. Um, Where's Linwood Park? Is that the one that's... Because um, you could do all kinds of things in there. It used to be a parking lot. Like, right. right. Yeah, it's got yeah. too much... You know, you've got the Keynes Bookstore over here. You could be doing... But I guess skateboarders like it, probably. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that is. Yeah, you can, yeah. I'm going to circulate Here, like, But think about what the big idea is. Yeah. If you had to sort of encapsulate all these things we've been talking about. Yeah. Think, think about writing down a big idea. While I leave you. Well, what if there was like seating in, in one area and then just like blank space in a different area where um, like kids could just do stuff that like kids what kind do? Of stuff? <laughs> what kind of stuff do they do? The capacity of cars that we had, especially at rush hour, it's a bit nightmarish to actually traverse that area, especially with yeah. people turning the wrong way. So more and more I see people turning the wrong way yeah, onto Narberth Avenue. Mm -hmm. 
like I think a lot of it unfortunately has to do just with the quality of the drivers. There's no sign here that tells you you can't go this way, so some yeah. people do come this way. Yeah, I think that's I'll be honest with you, I've lived in this town for 15 years now, and I still can't remember if I'm supposed to go in that way or that way. It's not that way. <laughs> I can have to watch everybody else. <laughs> it's not logical to me. <laughs> I think, you know, at least on North Norbert Avenue, you do have signs that say one way. People ignore them, obviously. Yeah, by the post office, they always... Yeah, like yeah. people, there's always somebody going down past the movie theater and you're like, stop! Yeah, exactly. There's always something. So I think it's just a practical thing. Maybe having signs saying, like arrows pointing the way you're Yeah, like a one go. way sign. There's no one way sign here. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you have any ideas for like how long you in general, I would like it to be something like the right target so you can see what would happen. Oh, I love you can it. See I them. love it. You can see them on the branch. Yeah. <laughs> to see what people do with them. Yeah. See, I'm like wondering if people are squeezing them into LA. Super shade. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think yeah. that's true. You couldn't hide those chairs too easy. <laughs> Beautiful or quaint, you know. If this moved, if this moved this way, it would be in the middle of the public. No, I think it could only move this much. Yeah. Which is sort of well, what that retaining pros- wall is now. Right? To approximately where it is now. Yeah, where the retaining wall is. A feature wall is right where the yeah. right where the that dirt earth area is now. Right. Should we go over this? Yeah. Or? Shade and seating and. Uh, Right. Uh, people at that table will explain their big idea, big idea. This what this is basically all about. So impossible um, but there is access um, from the train station at least on the um, outbound side to get handicapped access through this parking area um, other than that SEPTA is really gonna have to put in a lift I think on the north on the other the, the south side of the tracks and the north side and, wait, unless we can figure out a way to get a ramp through here but that's yeah. far-fetched also um, but the next big idea is really just to create, make this special paving, this whole area special paving. So from the face of the building on one side to the face of the liquor store on the other side, across all the way to the building facades here, and, and maybe hump up so that when you're coming down Haverford Avenue as a thoroughfare, you're stopping to kind of take this gradual rise and then go back down, and that slows people down. Either the hump will slow sl- you down or the paving pattern because it's sort of like an artwork piece that's got some really nice design in it. <clears throat> and then the other thing is, do we need access through here for emergency vehicles but really not regular traffic? Because there's an, there is, in fact, an out 
up around the little gym to get out. If you come in where the mural, the tree mural is, you can actually navigate this parking lot without having to go through. Mm. Um, then we're thinking maybe um, not have bike racks right in here, but bike racks out here. I mean, you can do all the biking you want on the plaza, but rather than have miscellaneous biking equipment, water fountain, fixed items, maybe they could be fixed elsewhere, either back here, since this is no longer a, a, a road per se, um, only again for emergency vehicles and utility vehicles. Um, it's less used and maybe this could become more of an area for that kind of thing. Um, trees randomly placed, parking random, no parking meters. If you need to go to the liquor store, you I pull don't up. I understand randomly placed parking. It's like a piazza in Italy okay. where you have your little fiat. And you just come in, you look, <laughs> and, and you get your liquor and you leave. But um, but the but there would. I don't know what happens now, honey. <laughs> or, or maybe like, yeah. or maybe like the fifth or ten minute parking along here. There are some spots here. Yeah. Um, so. So that if yeah. you're going to Capriotti's and you're going to spend a couple hours at the hairdresser, you don't park in this. Zone. You're not you parking park here elsewhere. Yeah. So that's the big idea. And, you put the and, and a lot close of close the door so you can get in and get out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, flexible seating. With yeah, small it's tables. Like yeah. Flexible seating, you could just have it there. Yeah. I mean, I know that um, people might think it will walk, but they do it in New York, and mm -hmm. furniture doesn't walk. Right. So, mm -hmm. it's chained down. And we also yeah, said that we did not really favor the idea of. You know, having this be the um, location for, a, you know, like um, concerts and that kind of thing, because we have other places where we can do that. But this seems like a, a place where it's not really, you know, it's not big enough. And not tiered seating, you know, we were just hoping that this would be a, a nice little green, nice space and using some of the other places for the, you know, we have a whole gazebo for concerts and stuff, so. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's move to another table. There we go. Well, this team gets a gets an A, a good solid A. How about an A plus? Which way we go? Oh, oh, we're not at your table yet. That's what we're doing. Over to the Greeks. Over to the Greeks. We didn't come up with like a final plan of any sort at all. A few different thoughts. Um, one of them was to create sort of a, an area of paving here that is different paving than the street. Maybe has embedded lighting in it so that at night, if this, or if this is closed off or closed off, might have a grade change to slow traffic down a little bit. And then this area, this, this would retain the, the um, parking, possibly parallel parking around the circle. Um, greenery uh, leveled off area here. Uh, where am I? Oh, I'm here. Oh, yeah, you are. And, and as the group kind of continued to discuss this idea, we talked about similar ideas, the other table with the, with the grade change kind of elevated walkways <clears throat> that would either, let's see, we have a lot of words, but underneath here is just the idea of some kind of elevated raised intersections that could maybe change into just a raised entire, that the entire area becomes raised. Um, there, were idea, there was a long discussion about the idea of how would you do the kiss and ride, sort of like if you were to move this sort of whole thing over and just create a, this as the, as the space that's without really Designed without vehicles, and yeah. that you could have some kind of, if you had fiats, right? Like <laughs> fiats, you could have a little kiss and ride in here that would take you in and out kind of more efficiently or maybe from the back in and out. And there was a little bit of discussion about what about if you did all, like you really needed a lot of parking, you could do possibly some angle parking on the, on the Hadford Avenue street. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and and then there was somebody who was talking about um, having a making the underpass more handicap accessible or mm -hmm. handicap accessible at all because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. you know could could we start a ramp here that kind of encircles some other area mm -hmm. start it down here and go under the tunnel as it a could ramp be a spiral yeah something yeah, like that it has to happen at the other end too which is a little challenging maybe and then a fountain and then a fountain yeah a fountain a solar fountain here <laughs> um, with seating and stuff. Don't you laugh. I <laughs> and then I there, were, there were kind of a lot of discussion of there were sort of programmatic stuff like making sure that there was space for gardening and continued mm -hmm. neighborhood gardening and garden club activities and lots of trees and um, and minimizing water runoff yeah, in that way. Ways to, ways to pick up storm water. Um, so the whole thing's a rain garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, oh, we talked a little bit about how like the rain kind of sheets off this way, mm -hmm. and how there's sort of that might create opportunities for picking mm -hmm. up the water in different ways that are mm -hmm. integral to the design in and, some way. And when it's really raining hard, this turns into a water slide. Who is yeah. knowledgeable about hard, permeable surfaces that cars can go on? Oh yeah, yeah. Grass paved. There are some now, right? There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely yeah. mix that in there. So that would not be tripping hazards for people, but would also be permeable. That'd mm -hmm. be a little hard in high heels, but. Right. <laughs> you know, another. Well, thing. that was something people said when we had those squares of sidewalk the first time oh, around. Interesting. Mm -hmm. They did catch their heels. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing about handicapped accessible. Um, that also means mom and with strollers, yeah, dad yeah, and strollers right, accessible. Right, 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 yeah. And uh, I, I know a few young moms mm -hmm. who are um, on their third child, and that handicap accessibility is absolutely what no. they're looking for. And yeah. 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 even with suitcases yeah. getting off of the train. Or oh, suitcases, that's right. Coming this up is why Southsiders Drive to Belltown Harbor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I guess there was some discussion about performance space or flexible use space that could have concerts, sure. um, maybe even closing off, some way of closing off the street without closing off, I guess, what further east end is like? Yeah, the ability to close off here and here mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. for example, at four o'clock we have a band that performs for kids and then this closed off, is closed off and then people are patronizing the toy store, the ice cream shop, and the French bakery, not just revolving around. We're not just closing the street for events where we, we get to drink as adults, but for kids and a small performance space here. Nothing elaborate. And then, but you could also close it off when you have adult performances and then everyone can drink in the street. But at least facilitate stuff, easy to manage, um, and close off the streets. Because it wouldn't be any convenience to put people down the forest. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and even the Septibus, which is going to be part of a puzzle. The Septibus, I guess, comes one way now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it always has, they have to kind of skip Narber when there's a street festival. But if, if it were to come to here, it could go up forest and still make. You know, make well, they have to town. skip it now. They skip well, on the Harborfoot Avenue was shut they, down they, for. Mm -hmm. Predicted. Yeah, they skip it. I mean, but they skip yeah. it everything entirely. And, and so this, yeah. if the, if this were designed well, you could continue to have the septa line still come through town without you know mm -hmm. stopping it. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything more on this one? No. Let's move along then. Chisha? Wonderful. Chisha. Yeah. Another A. <laughs> Same things over and over again that there's patterns, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, uh, hi, everybody. My name's Scott. Uh, and I'll try to summarize quickly because there's a lot of repeat stuff here. But, you know, our, our sort of organizing principle was to try to maximize and create to the extent we can a uh, a, a great big oasis, a, a great big public plaza. And so how do we do that? And, and I think in summary, I would say, you know, lots of different gizmos that are very important um, and, and spread out. So, you know, we can just throw out some, 
some ideas or you know sort of string lights across the street that begin to define the space a little bit more at the top and the bottom of the street you know a raised roadway as we talked about sort of a decorative pattern and the, and the sort of pavers that sort mm -hmm. of stretch across the street mm -hmm. you know all of this in an effort to really begin to identify this to the drivers um, you know we spent a bunch of time talking about sort of this road whether it's really necessary or not and obviously right. you know sort of some things to be thought of through there but um, if it has to go through it shouldn't be you know all the way around sort of one quick you know small of a access road as possible and then here out onto Haverford Avenue but also sort of recognizing the importance of you know parking at different times of the day particularly as drop-off was the idea of you know maybe just sort of short-term parking that could be beneficial to both um, you know people coming to the to the liquor store here but also for uh, the SEPTA station um, you know, talking about lots of landscaping and trees, um, creating shade in the, in, the, in the summer heat, and still trying, trying to create that, that central oasis. Um, water feature on there? Is that yeah, yep, so some people threw out water feature ideas. You know, um, somebody was talking about a, a, the planter that's down by the library that can also act as seating. And so it's all to just uh, to maximize and create this central space here. Um, what were some of the other ideas? Oh, one, I, one idea we talked about was sort of, you know, how do you, um, uh, how do you promote activity here on the plaza? And so the idea of food trucks at different times of the day, you know, maybe this could just, you know, could be closed off. This could become food truck parking and you could create, you know, some, 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 some activities there. Um, you know, this, uh, this comment was about, you know, creating a mural or a, a, a chalk wall on sort of this. There's a relatively high wall here. I think y'all can picture it by the mm -hmm. substation, you know, creating sort of those public art spaces. So it's lots of different ideas and gizmos to sort of, in general, try to create the central public plaza. That's great. Yeah. Great. Excellent. We're uh, American Family Market team, and we had some of the same ideas. Um, I think we all agreed that the fundamental thing that needed to happen is there needed, and I think every, almost every team has mentioned it, that there needs to be an accessible way to get from the south side to the north side, um, and um, and there has that it just has to there has to be figured out <laughs> one way or another. So we had a ramp that started here that sort of moved out over here and that would somehow be incorporated through foliage and whatever to make it look a little less obstructive. Um, we had a, a diverse set of opinions at our table and so I'll tell you the two main ideas that we had. Um, one main idea was that this is a people space only and that there was uh, maybe an access road if necessary in order to get out but that it was designed to be a people space, um, that there would be some type of park amphitheater uh, with the seats backing up to the higher level of the, the higher grade, perhaps, of the train station, um, and having some sort of performance area, and then having also that raised street idea that everybody has, or most people have mentioned so far, most groups have mentioned, so that you can see the performances from this side, you can see them from this side um, um, with enough greenery around to make it feel kind of park-like and less concrete. Um, the other idea was, at, was very strongly in favor that this be parking um, and remain as a sole function of parking besides this handicap accessible route. So that's kind of where we ended up. And I just want to add that the, the accessibility is not just for people from the train, but for everyone who lives on the south side and then, you know, Marion and the neighborhoods around it, too, who are coming. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, scooters, you probably all know there's no way for us on the south side to get to the north side without going over the bridge. Mm -hmm. But and we are going to so, have a bridge, right? I mean, but it's still really inconvenient is, when you have three kids and a stroller and you're carrying something to have to go up over the hill yeah, and over the bridge. On that side, yeah. there are gotcha. stairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not an easy walk or ride or push. M most people drive if they yeah. can't walk. Mm -hmm. So, so. Because we, we've lived on the south side for 30 plus years, and I, I hate the bridge being out, but I've, I've always found the tunnel. With, my with your kid. I mean, we've done it. I, I 
did it all the time, but if I could have had it, (laughs) if I could have had an accessible route with wheels, it would have been a lot easier than all the bumps up and down and all the bumps up and down. Well, I think we should also... Residents who are in wheelchairs, who ride scooters, um, we have kids on bikes, it's for, you know, accessibility means for everybody, not just for walking people. I think we should also take all of those things into account when they're designing the rebuilt bridge, too. For those same reasons, that's a good point. Yeah. Stairs and yeah. all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's but a they good can point. only. I mean, there is that natural. The the bridge mm-hmm. is going to be less steep, but that mm-hmm. hill is. They can't flatten the hill, so. So so, anyways, that's what that was generally speaking our idea. And it's not accessible to say go around to the bridge. It's accessible to say everyone can go this way. Right. Mm-hmm. Here, here. And tell me again where I, I'm having a hard time just visualizing where would it connect to the south side? So right now what we were thinking, but again, somebody who has more engineering training would have to figure this out, that there would be some type of, on this. pretend this is the south side and these are the train tacks, that there's some type of um, ramp that perhaps is more of a S-shape type of ramp that then comes down and goes in under the tunnel tunnel. and then back up in a way that, but it might have to come and extend fully out to the road. I mean, we don't know. Like to start, we're looking at the cheese shop sketch from this cheese shop group. And this is Walter McDonough. We um, started the process by deciding we really wanted a lot of open space in the area, and one of my one of my preferences uh, is that uh, well, I've, I'm a big fan of Narberth. Obviously, I've lived here a long time, but I've always thought the thing that's lacking in Narberth is a New England style town square. So we were thinking of the idea of making this more of a, an open town square area. So um, one of the things we thought about, and it, this was actually in our first draft, but it's not here, but is putting a fountain in the center. And we also thought about uh, moving concerts here from the, from the playground uh, over to this area. And the thought was that we would put a stage here. This is right along the, the train tracks, the outbound train tracks. And then because we have this large wall in the back, that would be a perfect place to showcase some of our local artists. Um, and then the thought was put lots of trees along the periphery uh, tables and chairs. Um, one of my favorite aspects of the, the square as it presently exists is the fountains, especially for dogs. So I like the mm-hmm. idea of preserving the dog fountain. And Todd Bressy said, well, why don't we do a hitching post for dogs? Because we have so many, <laughs> we have so many dog walkers in the neighborhood and there's really no place to tie them up when you go uh, shopping in downtown Narworth. So it's, uh, that was Todd's idea and I think that's kind of a neat idea. Now, for the street, for Haverford Avenue, uh, we discussed a number of different things. Because we would be closing off um, uh, this area to parking, we recognize that it's a popular uh, pickup and drop-off spot for people using the train. So our first thought was to have the drop-off, the pickup and drop-off on this side. This would be on the, uh, that would be actually the south side of Haverford Avenue. But we discussed that and the various options and decided it would be better to have it actually on the north side. And what we did here is in order to uh, slow down traffic, we decided to put this little curve in Haverford Avenue, sort of like a built out. And then we could build out the sidewalk here on the north side of Haverford Avenue. This would be in front of uh, the cheese shop here, the French bakery here. Um, and then put tables here so that people who uh, frequent the, the cheese shop or the French bakery uh, would have places to sit. And I believe that um, the um, Get Cafe will be moving into uh, this new apartment building, so that would also provide mm-hmm. seating for them. That's what they say. So uh, we thought of, in addition to having the curve to slow down traffic, to put in a different type of road surface. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm not an architect or, or a designer, I don't know what that would be, but something to signify that this is a, a different part of town, it's a unique part of town, and it's a good place to, um, to slow down. Uh, 
I know we talked about Belgian blocks, and people said that that's really not a great idea for um, uh, pedestrians. Slippery, yeah. Yeah. Slippery, um, yeah. And we also thought about having this as a raised area. This would be the walkway over to the train station. So that could be something that has a very gradual rise, uh, a walkway here, and then a gradual slope downward as you exit it. And one thing that didn't make it to this final edition, I guess we forgot, but it was in our first edition, was having some lights strung across this area, sort of like oh, some of the lights. South Philadelphia tea mm -hmm. lights, sort of like uh, some of the South Philadelphia neighborhoods, although I think those, are, those tend to be color, colored lights. Um, we were not a big fan of having uh, traffic come through here from the parking behind the uh, Haverford Avenue stores. So uh, we were going to think of closing that off, putting an area for bike parking here. Um, and I believe... Oh, this is public art. Yeah, we mentioned having, having art here. Uh, and I believe that pretty much covers everything. So, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Yes. Wonderful. That's good. Does that the details. We think we wanted to have a sense that this is a nice open space with something beautiful in the center because without anything, it just doesn't organize the center space. Yeah. Even though it's in the way, maybe, of something you'd want to do. I would like to go on the record by saying, I don't think a different pavement is going to make cars slow down. I don't think that when we made those crosswalks that were just, you know, like mm -hmm, right. crosshairs, it didn't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. And and if it's too textured, that's a dis that's a problem for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So as well as the rolly through cases coming <laughs> up. That, right. But but everyone has said some sort of different yeah. paving looks that really easy. looks different. And it could be a couple different working right. together in and it should be beautiful or, you know yeah. like it, you yeah. can do it just with elevation of the pavement mm -hmm. if it's gradual from all sides no well, for, from the car's perspective if it, you you are you go up a little hill to the plaza and then down again and then down again yeah and yes. maybe even a speed bump before and after mm -hmm. that, that you mm -hmm. know on either side mm -hmm. you might just have to do, i think you probably would have to do that <laughs> And I also, like, we did, in one of our drawings, we had the, the lights, string lights all across this area, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, I, you know, I wonder if that might even be enough, that we wouldn't have to have mm -hmm. the, although I like that idea of the So, now here's the plug. Right. We want this to be, you know, 100% renewable mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. for electricity. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, like, string lights so without, the, without having it be, right. you know, renewable. And we do think that sustainability and renewables and other things and all that. So is it, is it an option there to have a solar source of power for those lights? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Thing. Thank you very much. I think these are excellent ideas. And I think this was a success. I think it was. I hope you all do. Yeah. And I hope you had fun. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Architects for a day, landscape <laughs> architects for a day, which is even more important. What we're going to do with these now, Dave has been rolling them up and we're saving them, and we are going to uh, extract from them the big ideas that we perceive. And thank you for explaining those, that will help us a lot. In three weeks, um, we are, several things are going to happen. We are going to reconvene and i hope everybody can make it i think it's the 25th of the month okay is that right and uh by that time the borough council will have selected a professional planning firm a landscape architecture and planning firm and those people will be introduced and we will we will pass the baton to them along with uh, some form of a statement of what we have heard you all say mm -hmm. And then we will back away and fade to black. <laughs> and they will take over. And is there a budget in mind for this? Or? Not yet. There are funding sources available. Uh, Samantha is, uh, is uh, an old pro at bringing you know, money out of stones. So there's a lot of federal money and state money available to you. You can have to ask. But do we have to match it? <laughs> I'm sorry? Do we have to match it? Because that's. 
you know, like not always. About that other that's right. In some cases, we have to match it. But that's, I'm not going to say no. You know, I don't think any of us are going to say no to a, to a matching grant kind of situation. That's what makes the world go round. Some of them match each other, and then some are no match. So yeah. they yeah. all, all sorts pieces of, together. All sorts of strategies, yeah. and those will all be explored. This is not cheap work to do. This is significantly expensive work. Not something you do at home. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yay!